One really important component of RPGs that is missing in many modern MMORPGs is the decision making required to solve problems based on your prior choices. A lot of the time every class can do everything and goes about it the same method just using different key presses and on a different aesthetic. But in Guild Wars 2, the classes feel very distinct and often playing around some situations can be very strategic. For example, surviving on a thief requires really good positioning. Surviving on a guardian means sticking to your team. Surviving on a warrior means having good sustain. And surviving on a mesmer requires really good timing. To me, the best content in Guild Wars 2 is experiencing all of the intricacies of each of the nine classes, and while I've come out with many builds for each class showing off a variety of playstyles, I'm assuming you understand the core mechanics of that class and have the resources to obtain the gear that I suggest. Many veterans will tell new players which builds to run, and while their sincerity is appreciated, the veterans don't know what it's like to be a new player anymore, and expect them to learn the mechanics of the game while also practicing the most optimal builds. Meanwhile, these veterans have had years to adapt to the game's mechanics while their only competition was new players just like them at the time. It can be difficult for new players in a game that has been out for a long time as Guild Wars 2 has, but because Guild Wars 2 has mostly a horizontal progression, it isn't too late. And because of that, I suggest new players don't go to meta builds immediately. Test out the class mechanics and find a build you like, then progressively scale it up towards the end game. Another thing is that most builds assume best in slot gear and a specific stat type. And new players who just reach level 80 cannot adhere to those standards and often cannot play the build even closely to its potential. Many burst oriented builds need high crit modifiers to get value out of the build, but with low overall stats, you won't be critting much. On top of that, even be able to play elite specializations, you need to go out and get the hero points from the expansion content, which requires you to be able to kill some dangerous bosses. It's kind of ironic when you see someone suggest a build for completing the more challenging Heart of Thorns hero points, and they say to run Firebrand, for example, or some other strong elite specialization, but you need to have completed expansion hero points to even run that. That's what I mean when I say that the new player experience is different. So the purpose of this video is to show off the core class mechanics of all nine classes in Guild Wars 2 to help any new players decide which class they want to play while providing ideas for builds you can use during the leveling process that don't require elite specs. So core builds that can work and will allow you to solo challenging hero points. And just to make sure I'm not being carried by the overpowered synergy of my build with optimal stats, I'm going to be running whatever armor I was running last and removing all of my trinkets. And I'll be hitting like a wet noodle. Because I can't expect new players to go out and buy sigils or gear to level up, but swapping traits and utilities is free and convenient, I'll be focusing on that. But if possible, I'll mention a primary stat you should go for with the build such as condition damage or power, and what weapons you should take. I don't recommend playing these builds after you get your gear and hero points. You should check out the rest of my builds playlists and class matchups and mechanics guides for other playstyles. But if you do like these builds, it is very possible to continue using them. If you do enjoy this video or find it helpful, you can subscribe and like the video to help me out. And if you'd like to support me directly, there are links in the description. But without any further preamble, let's start out with the Elementalist. Elementalist is your standard magic user. It has access to only one weapon for skills, but has four attunements, which give different skills to use. Fire attunement gives you mostly damaging skills. Air is utility and movement. Water is healing and survivability, and then Earth is control effects. Because they have so many skills, they can be hard to learn at first, but once you understand their basic skill combos and rotations, you generally just stick to them because attunements have cooldowns on them, which prevent you from swapping back too quickly, so you often want to go through all your skills rather than saving them for later. And the decision making is in which set of skills you use, rather than the individual ones. Also. Elementalists have the least amount of base health and armor out of all classes, so if you don't build them for some defense, 
they will be super squishy. But if they are left unfocused, they can be a great presence. The build I am using here uses fire, arcane, and earth trait lines, and gains protection from casting auras, which are available in air and water attunement, while wielding two daggers. It is mostly a condition build, so you want to use fire and earth attunement for damage, and only swap to air and water very briefly to get out the auras, then stick to earth and fire. Rangers are in tune with nature. They use their environment and survival skills to their advantage, as well as pets. Because the pets are powerful AI, it can be an easy class to start out on, but controlling the pet well and being able to survive by yourself, which is where rangers thrive, is a bit more demanding than just supporting allies who will do everything for you. Also, contrary to popular belief, ranger does not mean someone who uses bows at range, but rather someone who patrols in small groups or even solo, and often the melee weapons of rangers are very powerful. This is why I've set up a greatsword ranger with two axes. This build has insane modifiers to deal power burst damage, and let me remind you, I've removed over half of my stats and still kill one of the hardest hero points with ease on this build. It uses skirmishing, beast mastery, and wilderness survival, and the quick draw trait is one of my favorite traits in the game, which allows you to lower the cooldown of your next skill after swapping weapons drastically. Guardians are akin to paladins. They are physical and magical and scale up aggressively in larger skill situations where they can support their allies no matter what role they choose to play. However, because their virtues scale up so well, when they're isolated they are slow and easy to focus. That being said, so long as you're in the right places, Guardian is one of the easier and more powerful classes. But if you're a bit chaotic neutral alignment, you may not prefer the Guardian. Here I'm using a power build with Zeal, Honor, and Valor to buff up my symbols, another one of the core mechanics of Guardian, to an extreme extent. Symbols are essentially ground targeted fields that every weapon has access to that you can stand in to gain buffs while also deal damage to enemies. So just place the symbol on your enemies and then stand next to them inside the symbol. Or place the symbol on yourself and wait for the enemies to come to you. Engineers have many scientific gadgets and tools at their disposal, making them very versatile. But because they assume the jack of all trades role, they can sometimes lack at filling any single role. They only have access to one set of weapons and a very low variety of weapons, but they can use kits such as grenades, bombs, and flamethrowers to swap between sets of skills with no weapon swap limitations. The build I chose uses explosives, firearms, and alchemy, mainly condition damage and the flamethrower and grenade kits to manage your positioning. Engineers have many options for ranged damage and control effects, so they can escape from tough situations. It may be difficult to land some of the attacks while moving around so much and using all the different skills, so engineer players have to love movement and pressing lots of keys. Mesmers use illusions and chaotic magic to deceive their enemies. Unlike other RPGs where illusions are mechanically just a debuff, they actually take shape in Guild Wars 2's action combat as real objects, and they make it hard for enemies to find the real Mesmer. They can tax the enemy of their time and cooldowns with their illusions, or shatter the illusions for a strong spell. While they are one of the most unique and rewarding classes, they are very vulnerable when the illusions are gone, or players can discern which one is real. They also are great at disrupting the enemy's synergies with interrupts, elusiveness, or invulnerability. This is a power build with the domination, inspiration, and illusion traits, which give phantasm synergy. Phantasms are just illusions that do a powerful attack at first, so you want to use all of your phantasm attacks and then recharge them with your heal skill, and then just do them again. Warriors are master weapon wielders with access to the most choices when it comes down to what weapons they can use. They gain adrenaline when they hit, and they can expend their adrenaline to perform burst attacks, which depend on the weapon type you're wielding. Warriors have the highest base defenses which makes them a forgiving class for new players, 
and allows more experienced players to build very aggressively for damage in close quarters. I chose a hammer and greatsword with strength, discipline, and defense traits for this build because I like the mobility provided by both weapons and you can solely break enemies down with the control provided by the hammer while the greatsword does great damage. You can take the hammer trait for more adrenaline and stealth but that won't be too useful on enemies that have defiance bars but on mobs you can freely control you'll get more adrenaline than you can even use. Necromancers can raise the dead as well as suck the life out of the living. When enemies die or they land certain abilities on their enemies they gain life force which allows them to enter death shroud which gives them new abilities and will protect their life with a second health bar. While they are very powerful at exposing the defenses of their enemies and have the security of two health bars which makes them very beginner friendly, necromancers are slow and predictable. Here I'm using blood magic, soul reaping, and spite and just stealing life when out of the death shroud and using signet of undeath to have constant incoming life force so I can stay in the safety of my shroud as long as I'm in danger. Just remember to not use the active of signet of undeath unless you want to revive allies because you want the passive. Thief uses subtlety and speed to get things done. Rather than cooldowns on the weapon skills, it has a shared resource that all weapon skills pull from, allowing you to choose which skills you need for the situation. This resource, called initiative, can be heavily invested into one skill for burst damage or spread out among others to be potentially unpredictable. Thieves do not provide much support to allies and often are required to find indirect ways to solve problems which can be difficult to newer players. However, this build is very safe and straightforward for new thieves. It is a condition damage build with pistol dagger and shadow arts, deadly arts, and trickery. The elite skill, Thieves Guild, summons allies to help you because you don't need to play fairly, you just need to win. You can also share your venom to the Thieves Guild for a good burst opener. You can use the 3 skill Shadow Strike which turns into Repeater when you want damage and you can use Cloak and Dagger the 5 skill to go in stealth for some misdirection if you land it and use your sneak attack while in stealth which is your 1 skill but you can only use sneak attacks while you're in stealth. Revenants are shrouded in secrets of the mists, the place where spirits of the dead linger. Sometimes these spirits can be communed with and revenants channel the energy of legends of the past. Mechanically, this manifests as a set of skills you obtain all at once and you have a choice between two sets you will use rather than picking and choosing individual skills for your build. This means that you don't have many choices, but regardless, Revenant Legend stances provide you many strong skills that are also versatile. These skills not only have cooldowns, but they have energy costs, a resource you recharge whenever you swap between your two legend choices. Managing this energy resource can be difficult for new players, but allows powerful combos and sustained damage when managed efficiently. Revenant is the only class you need to buy an expansion to access, but just because you have an expansion doesn't mean you have an elite specialization. You still need to level up, so here is a power build with two swords and devastation, invocation, retribution. Because energy management is the hard part, this build doesn't require many choices for using your energy. Just channel impossible odds while in Shiro stance and the swirling hammers while in Jala stance and use your sword skills whenever possible. If you still struggle to take out some of the hero points in the expansions, you can always check the LFG menu and search in each of the expansion maps. Otherwise, these builds should make leveling a breeze. So once again, if you want more detailed class guides, check out the playlists in the description. Also, if you'd like to buy the expansion, you can do so with the links down below as well. And you can support me by going to my Patreon, and I would greatly appreciate that. Having said that, I hope you guys enjoy Guild Wars 2 and all of the classes available. And if you have any more questions, you can ask me as well. And I will see you guys next time.